with that, we're going to move on to Andrew, pronouns he, him, calling him from Florida, uh, who says that theism is more credible than atheism because theists have more children. I have a million things to say about that, but who knows? Maybe there's a little bit more details in what you actually have to say. Andrew, you are on the line. How are you doing, man? Greetings, gentlemen. Good evening. So yeah, tell uh, us more about well, your, your assertion here. That is, is there more to it, or is that call screen line pretty much sum it up? There's a little more to it. Okay. There's a little more to it. Basically, evolution favors those who have the most children, and the ideology that produces more children, in terms of orthopraxy, seems to be more credible, and it's going to live out longer in the end. And so it's more likely to be possibly more likely to be true. Uh, so that's a, a massive, massive logical leap there. Um, yes. Whether or not something is useful, let's let, let's grant your premise that theists have more children. The quiverful movement, right, is a, is a theistic thing. Um, and and uh, I think there actually is some statistics to, to support the idea that atheists tend to have less children. I, I'm not sure, but let's assume that this is all accurate. That doesn't give you a shit about whether or not the thing is true. Um, you talk about evolution, and one thing that I've talked about before on this show is you know, whether or not religion has some sort of evolutionary backing to it. Gordon mentioned earlier that humans are really good at seeing patterns and things. Um, this apophenia and paradelia are, 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 are way of looking at meaningless data and trying to see patterns in it and derive meaning from those patterns, none of which actually exist. Those are evolutionary, evolutionarily advantageous traits. Because if you're out on the savanna and you hear a rustling in the bushes and you assume it's the wind and it's actually a tiger, you're lunch. But if you assume it's a tiger and it's actually the wind, all you did was get a good workout running away from nothing. Um, it's Pascal's wager works when you're out in the wilderness being hunted by bears and shit, right? Um, and so the, the, that line of thinking, it does make us more likely to see patterns but it doesn't necessarily mean those patterns are actually there. And we see the same thing with religion. If you want to say religion causes more children and that leads to some evolutionary advantage and therefore there's some evolutionary backing to religion, I wouldn't believe you, but let's, if that was real, sure, there's an evolutionary backing for religiosity that doesn't tell you anything about the truth claim, whether or not that tiger actually exists, whether or not that God actually exists. Gordon, what are you thinking? Uh, I was going to say, have you seen the movie Idiocracy? Because yeah, that's exactly. that a, a pretty good case. Um, the, the thing that I, the biggest issue I have with your argument is simply that having more children is evolutionarily advantageous because that's not always true. A lot of species make more children than is necessary so that they can lose some. And that has become an evolved evolutionary trait for stuff like rodents. But in a lot of cases, having more children is not better and so with most bird species, I mean, like the uh, blue-footed boobies or something on the Galapagos, they might have two chicks. Only one survives. They mm -hmm. have two, so that in case one dies, they've got an extra one. But ultimately, they will only feed and raise one child. So it's not, in that sense, it's evolutionary advantageous to have one more, but it's only because the other one's going to die. Um, and yeah. in the movie Idiocracy, I would make the case that lots of dumb people having lots of dumb kids leads to a dumb society that cannot then care for itself and fails in the most basic premise of trying to water plants with Gatorade, basically. Yeah. The, yeah. So that's, that's the thing is it, it really, it's not just having more children it's having more children that live. That's, that's the evolutionarily the advantageous thing. And you know, uh, yeah, fit, Jordan talks fit, about evolutionarily fit children, not just more children. Yes. And I would argue yeah. that if you're having a ton of kids and they're not getting educated, and they're in this tiny little insulated community, not experiencing reality. Those are not fit adults or fit children that will help our society progress. Yeah, that, that, that's a good one. Uh, I, I love the idea of talking about our selection versus K selection, because I never get to do that with anybody. But that is what Gordon's talking about. And if you want to be real, real excited, go look up R versus K selection and look at the reproductive strategies that are prevalent through ecology and evolution. Super cool shit. Totally different thing. We'll get to it in the super chat. Somebody send in a $10 super chat asking for to start explaining R versus K selection so we can talk about it more. Anyway, Andrew, uh, does that answer your question? Do you have anything to contend with what we're saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure it makes sense. Um, but, but something that Gordon said, that having more children isn't necessarily better or worse, 
that's a value mm-hmm. judgment. But like evolution favors those who pass down their genes the most, or those who pass down their their the best ideas get passed down the most. And that, that's the essence of my argument. And and so not it's not the religious claims that are the best ideas, but religion itself. Um, being something that evolution favors and tends to pass down more. And one example to give an argument, uh, to support the argument, will be Catholic education. Catholic education in all states are, most Catholic kids are two grade levels above um, public school kids in their academics. Do you have a source for that? Yeah, I, if I were to believe that, like, like we can assume that's true, why? Is it because private schools tend to have more resources and smaller class sizes and more, you know, uh, precise learning affluent, with the teacher, affluent, affluent parents, affluent yeah. parents that can afford tutors, and like, is do you think that maybe the societal factors of being able to go to a society to a private Catholic school might have more to do with the Catholic education system, or do you think that because these people are religious, they're somehow doing better? Assuming what you said is the, what the, the first part. The first part of what you said that could be that could that could be a factor. Um, Catholic mm-hmm. kids tend to have more money, right? They can afford private school. Another factor is religiosity itself. It's an added component into the curriculum, into the formation of the person. So they don't just focus on their academics, but their their social and emotional um, health, um, as and incorporate into the religious education. The source is from News Nation. They did a whole story on it. Uh, Bill Maher, a cultural commentator, even, he's an atheist, but he commented on that as well. Uh, like just, so just do like, you a, th- like a week or two ago. Based on what you just said, like I have to ask, do you think that secular education doesn't or can't enforce people in a social and emotional way and, and, and provide social and emotional learning for children? Do you think that only comes from religious education? <laughs> It could do it, but it cannot do it as well because it lacks the religious component. Why can't you teach children what religion is and give them a cultural humanities background without teaching them that the religion is true? Wouldn't be that be the same kind of component, only without the baggage of having the religious belief? You could. You, universities do it. They have religion classes. Um, yeah, I, 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 I never took a religion I, class, but I did take several humanities classes, did a lot of anthropology. I studied a lot of cultures and religious and belief systems around the world. It made me a more rounded person. And I was an atheist the entire time. So why wouldn't that be an issue in public school education? Because when you're integrating religion, you're, you're, you're forming a cultural identity. You're, you're turning the person more into just a scholar. You're integrating uh, uh, the power of the religion itself into that, into the for, forming the person. And you could do it without it, like you, you're just you're stating. But so you're so are you just, arguing for religious based on the data? It sounds like you're arguing for indoctrinating kids with religion so that they'll have more kids and then create more adults that want to have more kids to also indoctrinate them, which again has nothing to do with evolution. It's simply a societal construct. So I'm a little confused about what your argument uh, is here. Yeah, uh, yeah. And let me try to get to my original point. Uh, through sure. orthopraxy, you can see that ideas are more likely to be true if they're more functional in the society. Like, no. Whatever seems to be working seems to be the more true. That, that's no, just, that's no. The essence of my argument. Very Empirically, no. that is untrue. Empirically, no, that's not like true. Yeah. Thing, whatever, whatever airplane gets on the gets on the air, that's the one that works. But that's the math that's correct. That's a very yeah. different claim. Saying whatever works and is more prevalent in society must be true, versus saying whatever airplane flies is a functional airplane are two very different things, and you're drawing a comparison between them that you needn't draw. Whatever works in society is whatever works in society. There's cultural reasons behind it. There could be authoritarian reasons behind it. There could be a traditional thing going on there. There could be, there's a lot, you know, there's the old story of, uh, you know, a, a mother is preparing a Christmas ham and cuts the end off of the ham. And the daughter asks, 
why do you do that? And she said, well, because my mother always did it. And they asked the grandma, why do you cut the end off the ham? Well, my mother always did it. And they go call the great grandma. Why do you cut the end off the ham? And she said, because it wouldn't fit in the fucking pan unless I did that. And so this is you know, this generational thing that makes no difference. It makes no sense, but it's a societal norm. And it's the same thing with lots of things that we do in our society today. There's lots and lots of cultural practices that we have that have no real reason to be to exist. They're just things that we've done for a long time that we collectively assume are good manners. There's a reason why, you know, in, in, in one part of the world, if you hand something to somebody with one hand, it's a much worse thing. It's disrespectful. And I believe it's in, in China and Korea. I think I, I don't remember for sure, but like in there's a couple of Asian countries I know for sure that if you hand something to somebody with one hand, it's considered disrespectful. And you're supposed to use two hands. Does that mean that there's more value to panning something with his own two hands because everybody's doing it? And if not, why not? You know what I mean? It's the same thing here. Just because you know the 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 the, the traditional Jewish practice of putting water over your hands before a meal is a good thing because microbiology exists no matter what your religion is. Washing your hands before a meal and the efficacy of that practice tells you nothing about the truth of the Jewish religion. Similarly, you know, whether or not you have a bunch of kids, which you can argue whether or not that's a good thing, has nothing, no basis, no bearing on whether or not the God claim itself is true. I, you're just making this massive jump here and you've been making it the whole time and I don't see how you don't see it. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I don't see it. Um, so so look, look, the, let me try the, the this. Way you're framing... let's, say, let's turn it the exact opposite way around and say that for some reason, more atheists are having children all of a sudden. All the atheists in the world have a big old orgy and have lots of kids. Do you stop believing in God because it's more prevalent to have children when you're an atheist? If atheism produces a more functional society, then I would I would have to say atheism has more credibility to it than God. So it's probably I have to lean more towards atheism than theism. Okay. Andrew, do you think Let's we ha do you think we have a functional society now with looking at where we're at? politically, economically, climate-wise, are you happy with where our country's at right now? Because we are living in a patriarchal religious society, and that has been the overarching, you know, foundation of America. So if you're happy with the way things are right now, then that is true. But if you're unhappy with any aspect of the way that things are right now, then that is empirically not true, just from a logical standpoint. Um, our society's a melting pot. I don't know if it can support secularism or religiosity it seems to have a have, we, have we ever had an atheist president no so yeah, it seems to have fallen that been, religion in name though that they're not very there's rarely have we had a, a devout president like they're mostly like okay yeah religion you know i believe in god but they're in their lives they're mostly secular that's the complaint right. that's what i mean the the thing that I'm grappling with here the most is you're saying that like it religion makes your society more functional and we have this amazingly functional society. But when you compare the United States, which is a deeply religious nation, to any secular country, pick your favorite, you know, Norway, Sweden, Finland, uh, 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 Japan, you know, whatever, uh, you pick, pick any of these more secular countries they do better than us in pretty much every conceivable metric. Um, the United States has more prisoners per capita than any country in the history of the world. We have the least free, the most incarcerated population. 25% of all the prisoners in the world are prisoners here in America. Is that a functional society to you? These other secular countries have lower incarceration rates, lower teen pregnancy rates, higher rates of education, better rates of, of, of higher education, especially. Um, they have a, a lower suicide rates. They have citizens report overall more happiness, lower rates of obesity, lower rates of drug use. All of these magically amazing things that we strive for here in America are reality in more secular countries. And here in America, we're squalling in the mud and we're all religious. So where are you getting this idea 
that we are somehow more functional, better society because of our religiosity. That the, the data or, don't or that a, a more or a more religious society would be even better. Look at some of exactly. the most religious like countries in the world. Um, I'm not going to point fingers at anything, but there's a general <laughs> middle part of the world. There's a lot of very religious people that are ruled by the religious uh, minority, and those countries are not doing better. In fact, they're probably doing right. worse. Right. So how I, do you I grapple with what that? Was doing. Yeah, I, I appreciate what Flores was doing. I kind of wasn't seeing the, the gap, but he's kind of using my, the logic of my argument and giving counterexamples. I, I do appreciate that. It, it's making it easier to understand. Um, he's looking at the flaws of, of American society, and, and so I, I would, I don't know, I would simply say that America is the world's reserve currency. It, they, it, it's the, it has the most influence over the entire world. Um, but I, I don't know if they're more religious or more secular. That's that's why I can't really. It, it, it's too, it's too complex to say it's more religious or less religious. Um, eighty percent of kids are in public school. That's irreligious. So I don't know. Well, well, no, well, hold on there. I've I've worked around public religious. schools for most of my life. The they may be secular by law, but I promise you they are not secular in practice here in the United States. And even if they were. Those kids still have lives outside of school. And right now, I live in Oklahoma. I've moved several times here in Oklahoma. I have never once, including right now, lived in a part of Oklahoma where there weren't double-digit churches within walking distance of my house. So, like, we live in a very religious society here. And, yes, it is a melting pot. We have a, a, a heterogeneity of the religions that are here. But we are very, very religious. And evangelical Christianity is the dominant religion both in our political and our social landscapes. So for what you're saying to make any sense, it would have to stand to reason that secular societies score worse in all the metrics that I talked about, and that theocracies are actually the best, most functional, stable societies in the world. And I don't think that you would be willing to say that with a straight face. I hope you wouldn't. No, no. No, no. I, I know failing theocracy is mean. Right. So, get, get, like, if, if what you're saying is true, wouldn't it make sense to then also say that theocracy would be the best form of government? Um, uh, most people, no, no, most people do not think that's the best form of government. What do that's you think? What do you think? Is theocracy the best form of government? The best form of government. No. Why not? No. If, enfor if, if enforcing the religion, if, if everybody has to be religious and the education is religious and includes all these things, and then they all have lots of kids because it's a Catholic society and you're not allowed to use contraception or whatever the hell else it is, it doesn't have to be Catholic specifically, wouldn't that be better? Wouldn't that be the most functional society? We've already tried that. I'm asking you, if what you're saying is true, wouldn't that be the logical conclusion of what you called in to, to argue here? It would be the logical conclusion. I, I, I get yeah. it. Yeah. So then, do you support theocracy? And can you point me to any one theocracy that has ever worked. In the modern age, Saudi Arabia seems to be working. But is Saudi Arabia I mean, the is that, is Let's that look really it up. what you want to use as your example of a society that's working? Are you it, aware it, of their it, human it, rights it violations human rights and, as much and as the China, role of it, it, women in society? No, no, it, and... it is extreme. It so very authoritarian is probably one of the most extreme governments in the entire world, and they kill journalists on a regular basis. So I'm I'm just looking up. I just found like this is the first source that I found. It might not even be a good source. Who knows? But this random Google search is saying that Saudi Arabia is more of a monarchy. Iran is specifically a, supposed to be a theocracy with with some Iran democratic. Was, I was, what I was thinking about the biggest sort of yeah. main theocracy in the world. It's a yeah. So here's another one from yeah, another person saying that Saudi Arabia is an Islamic monarchy, not a theocracy. 
which you could split hairs, I guess. It doesn't matter. But like Iran seems to be a, a modern. Let's just double check really quickly. Uh, uh, modern theocratic uh, countries and see what comes up. So if theocracies, yeah, here we have Iran, Afghanistan. It says Armenia. I don't know about that, but do these sound like the kind of countries that you you would want to live in that are being super successful? I want to, that are. I want, to, I want to try to get into forms of government. Um, you know, but you did when you called. Church and state. I was just talking about religiosity. Why do you well, believe you know, in the separation of church and state? Why do you believe because in the separation of church and state if more religion is better? Because you're forcing others to live in, in, according to your interpretation of religion. And that's, what do you think that, happens and, when and people send their kids to Catholic school, Andrew? Andrew, what do you think happens when people send their kids to Catholic school? Do you not think that they're being forced to believe in the one kind of religion that their parents are raising them to believe in? It's enforcing your beliefs on others is kind of what religion has done in our country. It's kind of the hallmark of the whole fucking thing, right? Kids, you, kids are not forced. So you say, oh, we're, it's like saying we're forced to obey the law. Like, that's a strong word. When kids go to school, they're not being coerced into religion. Like, we're not coerced into learning math and science. Like, that's a strong word. It, it's, it, religion you, has a heavier influence in Catholic schools than public schools. But I will not use the word force. Let, let, let me try like, a different talk, angle because I don't want to get geocities, And that is forced. Let me try a different angle. Let me just try, try something different because I, I feel like we're going to get into semantics here and I want to move on because we've been on to talk for about 20 minutes. So let me just try a different thing really quickly is you keep talking about how religious societies are better and how more religiosity makes for a better, a better place to live and everything. And we, you know, obviously getting that drawing the logical conclusion out of that isn't sitting well with you. So let's try right now in the most religious parts of the world, including America, does, how does that work out for women and for LGBTQ people? Is the society better for them? Society is... Is society better for them? They're doing better in countries that allow these freedoms. And is is the allowing of those freedoms a religious practice or a secular practice? It's a secular practice. So what what are we doing? There are religions that are progressive. There are religions that are progressive. Religions can be progressive and fight for... Are you advocating for any of those? Convictions. Are you advocating for any of those? Because so far, the main example you've given of your convictions here is Catholic school, which is kind of historically not progressive. Yeah. The, the Catholic Church has a lot of progressive stances, and there are other stances that are behind on the times. Like, so religion can so, be progressive. Here we are again. Other, there are many here we are again. What do you think is better for a society? Is it the religious one that says, this is what the book says, this is what the leaders say, this is what we've been doing for thousands of years, it's gonna be this way, and maybe someday kicking and screaming will drag it into the 21st century and it'll eventually get more progressive? Or do you wanna live in a society where the laws and the regulations and the way that we do things is thought out and argued and debated and discussed and you to, to steal the line right. from Richard Dawkins, intelligently designed, where we actually right. come up we're, with this together even, in a secular way. Right. Equitable. Everyone should have an equal yes. shot. And people right. shouldn't be risen above each other because of their status one way or the other. Like, yeah, do you, do you think sorry, that maybe that, that secular... Right. Do you think that I'm secular sorry, society is better... That. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to ask you, and forgive me, I know I'm rambling a bit. I just want to make sure I really drill this home so there's no misunderstanding between us. Do you think that the secular society that thinks these things through and gives everybody the same opportunity, the same rights, the same privileges, the same protections is better? Or do you think 
that a more religious society is better and that somehow will become progressive eventually. And Saudi Arabia is an example of a great flourishing society of, of progress. What do you think? I think, in my personal opinion, the best elements of religion will eventually be more progressive than even secular society. It's also because of secularism, they will adopt the best practices of secularism and and religion will, will make it better. And I think it's it's a it's a it's a friendship that goes hand in hand. And 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 I think the best elements of both, that's what's winning out the end. That's my honest answer. Because I what, what like, more I mean it's China, they're super secular and they're horrible, right? Yeah, yes, you're right. There are secular countries that are horrible. You can point to evil atheists all day long. You cannot point to evil atheism. You cannot tell me any good thing that a religious person can do or say because of their religion that an atheist could not also do or say. However, you can come up with a mil you should be able to very easily come up with dozens of examples of evil hideous, heinous, antisocial, terrible things that a religious person would do because of their religion that an atheist would never do because of atheism. No one's ever gone out there and committed mass murder or bombed a bus because they're atheist and they wanted to prove atheism. That doesn't make any sense. And like, I China's, can't, China's I also want... not a great example because it's so secular because everyone just follows the CPP. That is the religion. Right. The, right. the Communist Party. There's, they there's got a rid lot of religion, there. so there would be no competition for that authority. It, it's it's like with uh, with Stalin. You know, you come into a situation where you the people believe that the leader of the state is a minor god. You'd have to be stupid to not take advantage of that. So like, it's the same. Th it, the it, what's blowing my mind the fuck away, Andrew, is that like earlier on you you talked about Saudi Arabia, and I just I I looked it up. You know, this is from Amnesty International. Last year, they committed 148 uh, uh, personal. Let's see here. Sorry, are these human rights violations? Uh, uh, executing 81 individuals a day, the largest mass executions in years. Like there's, there's like I'm, I'm looking up like just lists, scores of human rights violations here, and it's because this is a religious country that's following religious law that's hurting people because of their religious beliefs. You don't find that in a secular worldview and like I, I i can't wrap my mind around how you can sit here and say that yeah well things aren't great for women things aren't great for lgbt people and yeah the you know the, the most theocratic countries in the world certainly aren't you know beacons of humanitarianism or or, or progress or, or anything but really Religion is kind of a good thing, except for when it exists. And then it's it's really important that it, it goes hand in hand with secularism. And like, it seems to me like from the beginning of this call to now, you've just kind of chipped away more and more and more and more of what you're saying to the point where now religion is just this pretty flower in the garden as opposed to the basis of a society. I'm wondering if you can reconcile with that at all. Yeah, I'm conceding to all the negative aspects. I'm, you know, I'm not denying any of those. So I, I, can I you give me any of the as same as I possibly can. Can you give me any of the same negative aspects in terms of a secular society? Wow, there are there are secular societies can be the opposite of progressive. It, it just because it's secular doesn't mean, by definition, it is good and progressive. It depends on which secular ideas are the most enhanced humanity the most. Uh, so, it, it, I'm sorry, if you want an example, I'm sorry, example. You want an example? Yes. Okay, uh, with, without the religious idea that we are inherent, we have inherent human rights, anybody could just take them away in secular society. We gave those rights, therefore, we can take them away. I think that's a negative, uh, that's a, a huge negative aspect in secular society. We created those rights. Whereas uh, the religious you, concept of, oh, God gave us these rights, they cannot be taken away. Do you honestly, and I mean this, I, I recognize how shitty this sounds, and I don't apologize for it because I, I need you to really be serious with me. 
are you honestly suggesting that without religion, we would not understand that human beings have natural rights and we wouldn't have a concept of human rights? Is that really what you're trying to tell me here? We do have a concept of human rights without religion. Yes. Yes. So what are you talking about? With religion, you get the idea that it is inherent, objective, and God-given. With secularism, it can be taken away. It, it, we invented it. That's, my, that, that, that's what I meant. That's what I'm saying. So follow-up question. The Spanish Inquisition. How much did they respect, <laughs> okay. right? How much did they respect okay. God-given human rights, Andrew? They did not. How much does any boring. religious society respect God-given human rights? Can you give me one example of a deeply, deeply religious society that because of their religious beliefs alone has particular respect for the human rights of people? Or more freedoms, wow. because more I'd freedom, like sure, to know yeah. a religious society that has more freedom than a secular society. In general, yes. secular societies seem to be more be free. Because of their religion. None of this, yeah, well, ha secularism did it, but religion was important because it was there. I'm talking about because of their religious beliefs. Can you give us an example of these things? Um, I cannot. I cannot. I would have to look it up. And right. I don't, and I might be biased if I do... So, I think you are. Um, a, lot, like a lot of great points. A lot of great points. So the, this, what I'm, I'm hoping we've getting, gotten across here is that you keep talking about how religion is this important part of the world. And what I hope you're seeing, and I, the last thing, one of the last things you said a little bit ago is that secularism and religion go hand in hand to make a great society. It seems to me like progressive thought is driving society ahead in spite of religious thinking not because of it. I wonder, like, that that's pretty much my thesis statement for this whole thing, is that it, it, it's against religion's wishes. And then eventually religion catches up and says, okay, yeah, well, we do that. Be eventually, the church says, we're going to welcome in gay people because, you know, we're a loving church, because the church has to stay in business. They didn't want to do that. They have to keep it up. What when, do you think, Gordon? When did the Catholic Church um, publicly apologize for helping the Nazis? Did they Good question. ever publicly apologize for that? Because they did. They 100% did. Mm -hmm. That was actually, I believe it was the first treaty that the Nazis ever signed was with the Catholic Church, wasn't it? Literal Nazis. <laughs> so that's that's the history of, of religion. Just, you know, just a little snippet of it. Okay. All right, does, uh, does that do anything to shake up your claims here? Is that does that give you any any pause to what you're saying at all? It does. It does. All cool. the negative aspects. Um, well, it's, it's, I, I want to come back to one thing you said in the beginning too. Yeah, is it what you're talking about with having more kids and evolution is also those things are not related in any way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah, that's go ahead, that, that's the thing, man. Is it like it's. It's kind of been like over the course of this call, it's been claim after claim after claim after claim after claim that's completely unsubstantiated. And what, like, I, I just, I wonder if this is anything that, like, are you willing to change your mind in, in the course of this? Because I hope you understand we're not, we're not just giving you some negative aspects here. We're directly countering the things that you're saying are true. And so it's not like me just shitting on religion. It's what you're saying doesn't stand up to reality. And in fact... It seems that the inverse is true. Does that resonate with you at all? Do, are you willing to, to change your mind on any of this, or do you think that we haven't been convincing? I'm willing to change my mind. i I, I got to go back to the call and, you know, re-listen, because it's a lot that you guys said. So. Okay. Cool. Well, Andrew, okay. I appreciate, appreciate your time. That. I appreciate you, listening. You, you've had a... Yeah, it, I, I, I think you've had a very honest conversation with us, and I really do appreciate that sincerely. So... Thank you so much for hey, tuning in, Andrew, man. And quick question. Do you know what this mushroom is? <laughs> if you're going to learn one thing when you talk to us, at least this is a non-religious thing. This is called Amanita muscaria. It's the Mario mushroom. Now, you're done. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Fun mushroom facts. Uh, thanks so much, Andrew. Seriously, please call us back again if you want to talk about this some more.
Hello, I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer of The Line, and I only became a woodworker for the puns. That's not important. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so on our Patreon or as a channel member, and you can actually support specific shows and specific hosts in special tiers on those. Check those options out. Also, you can leave a super thanks and get a little highlighted deal, but if all else fails, you can always like, you can subscribe, and leave a comment. Now, here are some suggestions because I don't care about the algorithm. I am the algorithm. Bye.